Welcome, everyone. Kevin and I are going to have some fun today. Back and forth, Becker and Orr. Lots of topics to cover. You can see them on the bottom of the screen. The lead-off topic there, interest rates, how high are they going to go? What's with inflation? How does it all work into the markets? We're going to cover all of those topics and have a lightning round. Lots of fun. You want to stick around. What better way to go into the holiday season than with a new episode of Back and Forth? Of course, we love doing it this way. This is always the way it should be done, taking all the topics that we can think of and wrapping them up into one. Remember, if you want more of our Back and Forth, our financial 15th, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go there. Lots of content, lots of things to know about, and we're more than happy to show you everything that's there. If not, also check out our website at beckerroar.com or like us on Facebook. You can find any of this all the time, all of those places. We want to see you subscribe more often. So today we are going to start on back and forth with what are known as interest rates. There are a lot of things going on with this, Clint. What is the main thing we should look at with interest rates going to 2022? Yeah, I, I think we have to do a little background here. The big announcement last week, uh, Federal Reserve main chair, or Jerome, Jerome Powell, say, chairman of the mm -hmm. Federal Reserve, the central bank in the U.S., they, they kind of hinted that rates are going up pretty much guaranteed in 2022. Uh, they yeah. said they're going to be removing the stimulus. They're doing all that bond buying. They're going to remove the stimulus faster than they originally thought. And then the hint was that you could see three rate hikes in 2022. And you can see even more rate hikes in 2023 and likely 2024. That's their tentative plan at this stage. I don't think anyone was surprised by this, no. Kevin. I think if anything, I thought this announcement would come sooner because they were saying inflation is transitory. It's just going to disappear. Not exactly their words, but that was kind of the implication. And now they're removing transitory from all their statements. And it's got yes. an implication. Inflation is sticking around. We're going to have to start to hike interest rates. Not really a surprise. What was your take? Yeah, I think that's exactly it. I think the fact that we've been preaching transitory inflation since about, oh, I don't know, May or June of this year. And it, it really, it's consistent. And it's been getting higher and higher and higher. And they have to worry about that one going forward. So, yeah, naturally, you saw this coming in again. When the rate hikes were saying, I mean, originally they were looking at, you know, end of 2022, maybe 2023. Now you're looking sort of that middle of the beginning part. And I think you're right. That sort of three areas there is going to happen with the three hikes that probably come each year. Now, again, a lot of this may depend on how this new Omicron goes. I mean, right now, we're, when all these announcements came out, Omicron was still a little infancy, but now it is the dominant strain in the United States. So you're seeing some some closings. You're seeing a few other odds and ends. It may delay it a little bit, but I do not see it stopping. I mean, inflation's there, and I think you're going to find out that, yeah, the rate hikes have to come. I mean, even in this country, we're looking at sort of a March-April time frame, even with the Omicron variant and a little bit of the closing. Hopefully, this fourth wave will be a little less impactful than, say, some of the other ones. But I think that's sort of the area that we're seeing going forward. You see rate hikes go up at the same pace in Canada as they're expected to go up in the U.S.? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a harder call. I think that Canada will have that sort of scenario where we're going to have to increase at least what the U.S. does. And, and again, because we have to maintain sort of that interest rate. If we start having lower interest rates than what the U.S. is, you're going to find less and less dollars coming into the country, I think. So and I think we need to have that sort of aspect where maybe we're a half or a quarter point higher than the U.S. just to maintain things as is. Yeah, yeah, I'd be on the same page. Uh, rate hikes are coming for sure. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's move along here. And this is uh, a remarkable, remarkable. I remember the, the old adage and when I was in school, as we talked about, as the companies grow in size, Kevin, they tend to slow down. We talk about the blue yes. chip companies, the stable companies, Definitely. a little more stodgy, but a little more uh, consistent. And the, the nimble companies experience the high growth. That's the idea. The startup companies and eventually get to a size and a scale where they grow, but not at the same pace. And then you look at Apple, and I'll pull up this chart from uh, companiesmarketcap.com, and it just defies expectations. This is the, the market cap of Apple. Think of the value of Apple. And you can see in about 2023, it hit the, or 2013, pardon me, it hit like the 1 trillion or the 500 billion mark. Then 2018, it hits the 1 trillion mark. And then two yep. years later, 2020, it's at 2 trillion. It doubles. <laughs> And now it's on the doorstep of three trillion. Like this is the world's largest company and its growth is accelerating. This is not what the textbook tells you it's supposed to happen, Kevin. No, this, this is definitely not what the norm is. I mean, normally you just don't keep going up and up and up and up and up. And again, I mean, it, I think part of the reason has to deal with Apple being Apple. I mean, I, I read to a lot of people and I know the phrasing is wrong with this, but there's a ton of Apple users that drink the Kool-Aid. Everything has to be Apple. I have to have the iPhone. I have to have the iPad. 
I have to have the the earbuds that are only Apple oriented. Everything has to be on that Apple vein. And it doesn't matter what the product is. They're buying the latest version. So, you know, the 12 Pro comes out last year. The 13 Pro comes out this year. I have to upgrade. I, I don't know what the big differences are, not being the big tech guy, but is there really that much difference that I have to get the new phone? But there's that, that sort of scenario that I need the latest gadget from them. And of course, that's just going to continue going forward. I mean, everybody seems to have that aspect. So I think that's part of the reason you're seeing a lot of that movement up. It's not happening with every company, but we are seeing it happen with a few other tech companies that keep growing and growing. And it could be the, co the, the COVID or any, anything else along those lines. What do you think? Yeah, well, Apple specifically, I mean, they're incredibly profitable. It's not just by yes. fluke that they got to this size. It's because they're a massive profitable company. And they have to give them credit for innovation. Like they came out with the, the iPhone, the very first yeah. version. And now they've kind of transformed into like a service-based company. They're very big in their wearables. They have all the services products. Like you, you can get uh, subscription services through them for, for yes. iTunes, uh, for TV. Like they've definitely been able to expand and continue to innovate. And that struggles for many companies. You get a hit product and it's hard to follow it up. Apple's been able to deliver consistently over the last two decades. Uh, no surprise to become a, a massive profitable giant company in the end. But it's just the idea this massive company is accelerating their growth. Normally we see the opposite. Normally they slow down in yeah. size, but Apple's been able to defy expectations here and just uh, continue to knock it out of the park. But you're right. I mean, and, and the one thing like, I, I would never have assumed that $200 earphones would be a necessary item. And, but, you know, people go after that. And I'm thinking, you know, you used to be able to get these things that plug into the phone for 15 bucks. Nowadays, you're spending a huge amount of money, but you're right. The wearables and everything else do make it that way. So, I think what we got to do now, though, is move from Apple as the largest company in the world to more stuff that's important, which is our lightning round. And today, I think we should do a true back and forth on this. So let's see what the questions offer us. And I'll let you start, Clint, and I'll see what I can answer best of my ability. All right. I'm going to be the lead off one here. And I'm going to admit, I, I came up with some uh, out of left field questions here, a little Ooh. off the norm questions just to <laughs> make things interesting. So I was at the Jets game. Uh, they played the Washington Capitals on Friday. Yeah. Not the best game they lost. But one thing I noticed while they were there, Kevin, the Winnipeg Jets have non-fungible tokens. They have NFTs. Are you buying <laughs> the Jets NFTs? I well, I'm not. I'm probably not the right person to ask. It's not really my generation. I do love everything Jets, and I collect whatever I can. But I don't know that I want to go online and buy a non fungible token of the Jets. It may be something that I think appeals to some, but I'm one of those guys. I want to physically hold it in my hand if I can be able to deal with it or be able to wear it. Something along those lines. So yes, I think they will do well with this. It's another source that they can deal with revenue wise. But for me, not what I think I'm going to get. So that's sort of the area I want. Now, I'm going to switch gears a little bit from this. I'm going something more world-oriented. With all the stuff that's been going on in the States recently and Mr. Manchin, do we think that the Build Back Better is going to pass? Or is it dead in the water? Yeah, the uh, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer was saying that they still want to put it to a vote, uh, which I don't, I'm not sure why they do that. It seems pretty no. clear they wouldn't win like it's going to get voted down there'd be a much more opposition than in favor of it but i think this version of it is pretty much dead in the water now i think maybe they come back to the table with a different version or they strip out little pieces of it and do those separately but this huge bill that encompasses all what they're calling social infrastructure i think mansion just put the nail on the coffin there i don't think they're going to come back with that no yeah, well, I'm going to ask you a question here, market oriented 2021, unusually calm. We only had a couple yeah. of pullbacks in the market, really just two that were 5%, which is highly unusual for the market to have that little volatility. Is 2022 going to be the opposite? Are you expecting choppy waters in 2022? Actually, no, I, I think the market will be fairly calm. I don't, I don't think you're, you're not going to get the robustness that you've had as the 2021 market. And I think you will get a little bit more of that volatility. I think we'll see more than a two, 5% pullbacks, just based on the fact that right now you seem to be having that fight between, uh, oh, I've got to buy the dip all the time, or I've got to mm -hmm. sell the rally. And that's what we're getting into right now. Omicron, less stimulus, everything else. Is that a bad thing? Or, But we're still getting good earnings from companies and things going forward that way. So it's going to be a bit of a push and pull, probably a little more sideways, I would say. But I'm not expecting huge volatility by any stretch. So Alrighty. I put it that way. All right. This is probably a real simple question to ask. I'm going back to the hockey stream on any source. With the fact that the NHL basically is shut down from the 22nd right now to the 27th because of what's going on the covid are NHL players playing in Beijing in 2022? 
I'm still saying yes. I think you're going to see NHL players in the Olympics. Uh, I mean, they've already got a break in their schedule. It, it's already somewhat planned. Admittedly, uh, COVID could certainly throw a wrench in there. If we see more mm -hmm. cases go up, that could put a whole bunch of implications for the Olympics and the athletes. But I'm going to say yes, NHL players in the Olympics in February. Nice. I like that. Yeah, and I'm going to switch gears completely here. We can't be near Christmas and not talk about Christmas movies here, Kevin. And I'm going I'm right waiting. to the late 80s. This is like a prime vintage for you here. So what is the better Christmas movie, in your opinion? I'm going to give you two here. Better Christmas okay. movie, Chevy Chase with his legend Christmas Vacation yeah. or Bruce Willis with Die Hard. Which one's better? Okay. Well, last year we did the same sort of scenario, and I told you Die Hard is not a Christmas movie. It is. Movie. It's at the holidays. It's not. No, just because they're sitting there, it's you know, it, it it has nothing to do with Christmas other than the setting. So my view is going to be Christmas Vacation, and that's because the theme is based around Christmas. It's all about Chevy, the family, the whole nine yards. So as far as I'm concerned, that is the Christmas movie. Die Hard is a wonderful film. I love every minute of it, but it's not a Christmas movie. <laughs> so I'll go with that one. Okay, switching gears again. Uh, we are getting into the fact that Omicron now, as I mentioned, is the dominant strain in the United States. Do we see restrictions going back to the way it was before vaccines? Or are we going to slowly li limit where we are? I don't think we get that strict. I, I can't see them going back to the full lockdown that they had. We're talking in, in Canada, specifically Manitoba, where we are. I can't see them going to that extent. Uh, I could see more restrictions that we have at the moment. Like they've already limited uh, the large gatherings, the Jets games to 50% capacity. They're already scaling back some schools in a few areas or scaling back some of the restaurants. I could see that, but I can't see a full lockdown. I don't think we go to that level of restriction. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so that's a, a couple each. Well, we do one more each to finish it sure. off here. I'm going to ask you about the World Juniors. Last year, Canada, ooh, so ugly finish to the, the World what? Junior Tournament. Ended up in the silver loss to the U.S., What's your prediction for this tournament starting on Boxing Day? Well, I happen to think, and of course, I'm a homer, and there's there's always going to be that aspect, but I do think the Canadians have the best team out there. I mean, you don't have a lot of returnees, but, I mean, you're bringing on two possible generational players and Shane Wright, who should go first overall this year, and Connor Bedard, who should go first overall last year. He is only the seventh 16-year-old to ever make this team that tells you the talent they've got just to be able to do that. So I think we're solid all the way through, decent goaltending, solid defense, Good forwards, Winnipeg Jack Cole Perfetti being an assistant captain now will lead the way, and I think we're going to get the goal. All right. All right. Finally, my last question. <laughs> being on that movie sort of scenario, we saw Spider-Man come out with the largest number of box office for this year. Do we think that since the Matrix 4 starts on Tuesday, will this box office for Matrix open better than any of the other three? The other three Matrix movies from yes. 20 years ago? Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. No, is my, my resounding answer there. I don't think they could recreate that magic. I think you had like a moment in time when that first Matrix movie came out, massive box office, lots of intrigue. They had the sequel shortly thereafter. I don't think Matrix 4, 20 years later, is going to be able to recreate that. I don't think it beats the originals at the box office. No, I can probably agree with the same thing. So I think we're done with that one. We've done a whole bunch of questions. We actually did a back and forth and managed to do things along those lines. Remember, if you want to get in touch with us for this, any of our financial 15s or any other questions we can ask you, please visit uh, chatwithclintonandkevin.com. Give us your questions. We're more than happy to answer them, get back to you in a timely manner on that. Or if you have any suggestions for what we should do on a back and forth or a financial 15, please send us those as well. We'd be more than happy to take those suggestions. Otherwise... I'm done with there. The last comments today are to you, Clint. What do we have to say? I think we'll leave it there. We'll both agree Die Hard is a phenomenal Christmas movie and wish everyone a happy holidays yeah. and stay safe.